You are watching the Heartland Author Channel. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For today's video, I'm going to completely redo the introductory video of my Creating Constructed Languages series, which, as the title suggests, is about constructed languages, or conlangs for short. This series is going to be geared primarily towards those who are creating conlangs for writing books, particularly works of fiction. However, for those of you who are creating conlangs for any other reason, we'll find a lot of the content in this series to be relevant. Although there are many ways to classify constructed languages, there are two basic types of conlangs as categorized by how they are created. A priori languages and a posteriori languages. The phrases a priori and a posteriori both come from Latin. A priori means from the former, and a posteriori means from the latter. If you're creating a conlang for a written work of fiction, you're more likely than not to be creating an a priori language. An a priori language is a constructed language that is either predominantly or entirely not derived from a natural language, such as English or one of the thousands of other natural languages spoken by humans in real life. A priori conlings can be said to be constructed from scratch as they are built from the phonological, grammatical, and other linguistic features used to construct the language. A priori conlings are more likely to be created for speculative fiction works such as fantasy and science fiction than for non-speculative fiction works. Two well-known examples of a priori conlangs created for literature are the Quinya and Sindarin conlangs created by J.R.R. Tolkien for The Lord of the Rings. A constructed language whose features and or vocabulary are derived from one or more natural languages is known as an a posteriori conlang. A posteriori conlangs are not as commonly employed for use in written works of fiction as a priori conlangs, Although works in which alternate history is a part of the story are one example of where a posteriori conlangs can be used for artistic purposes. A posteriori conlangs are often created for non-artistic purposes, such as conlangs created for interlinguistic and or international communication, a very famous example of that being Esperanto. This video and the upcoming videos in this series would not be possible without a ton of content from other YouTubers and other online sources being available. Several YouTube channels have overviews of various languages and other language related topics. These include the Lang Focus channel, the Juolingo channel, and the Native Lang channel. Additionally, the Artifetsian channel has a ton of videos about not just constructing conlangs, but also world building. I'll provide links to each of those channels in the description box below. Wikipedia has a wonderful article about constructed languages, and I'll provide a link to the article in the description box below. I look forward to producing more videos about conlangs and their usage in book writing. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding you all to write and construct the languages of your imagination. Bye for now!